The purpose of this video is to remind ourselves or to learn how to draw free body diagrams. And free body diagrams are sometimes abbreviated as FBD. When we draw free body diagrams, which you would have encountered already, possibly even in grade 7 science, we are going to be using the concepts of Newton's first law. And if you recall, Newton's first law was the concept of inertia. We are going to be using the concepts of Newton's first law. And if you recall, Newton's first law was the concept of inertia. Inertia means that objects that are moving like to continue moving, and objects that are at rest like to stay at rest, unless there is an external force acting on them, and particularly a net external force, so an overall external force acting on them. So. So let's think about this in terms of an imaginary object. This object So let's think about this in terms of an imaginary object. This object is sitting in midair. We can call it a block or something like that. And we're going to draw the forces that are acting on this object. So if this object is just in midair, the only force acting on it will be the force due to gravity. Now, we normally draw the arrows, the force vectors, from an object from the center. Now, it doesn't have to be the center. Usually for symmetrical objects, the center of the object is also the center of gravity, so that is a logical place to draw the arrows from. This object, as long as it's mid -air, in midair, has only the force of gravity acting upon it downward. That means it will accelerate in the downward direction, because according to Newton's first law, there is a net force acting on it, which causes it to accelerate in the direction of that force. But if we did not want this object to accelerate anymore, we could perhaps draw a table underneath it. So now we have a table underneath our object, so it can no longer accelerate in the downward direction. But it still has the same force of gravity acting on it. So how can we show with our force vectors that it is no longer going to accelerate according to Newton's first law? Well, what we say is there is now a second force acting on it which is in the upward direction. And this force is actually the force of the table acting on that object, which is counteracting the force of gravity. Now the force of tables, or the force of the ground, or the force of anything that counteracts gravity, we label with an N, and we call that the normal force. For, so the normal force is just anything that is exactly So the normal force is just anything that is against gravity. It's keeping the object up. So now if we again look at net forces, or overall forces, this object has an equal downward force as an upward force. So therefore, it will not accelerate, because Newton's first law says it needs a net force, or an overall force, in order to accelerate. However, if we want the object still to accelerate, we could apply a force. Well, that was a little large. Let's apply a force, but not quite so big to this object. And we are going to call this the applied force. So this is the force applied. Now, again, if we are applying this force, we could say we're pushing it or we're pulling it. The object will accelerate in the direction of that force. Now, often, there's also another hidden force. So some of these forces are, are less obvious than others. For example, if we make this table be not so smooth, and let's add some sandpaper to this table. 
and maybe to the bottom of the block too. We've glued sandpaper to both sides. Now it's going to be a lot more difficult to move this block, or for the same applied force, it's not going to move as far. And we show that by drawing a vector for this backwards force, which is the force of friction. So the force of friction is due to the contact surface between the block and the table underneath it. Now you can see I made it obvious that the applied force in this case was a lot larger than the frictional force. So I wanted to show that this object is still going to move, that it has a net force in the, we could call it the forward direction or in the direction of the applied force. To give this a little more concrete sense, I'm going to give these numbers. Let's just say the applied force here is 15 newtons and the force of friction is 5 newtons. Then you can say that the net force is 10 newtons in the direction of the applied force, so it will begin to accelerate. This whole concept of net force, you can think of it this way, that the net force is equal to the sum of the forces, or in other words, if you have uh, two or three or four forces, you just add them up until you have all the forces. <coughs> That's how you get the net force. So in this case, again, normal force, gravity force are opposite and equal, so they cancel out. And our applied force and our frictional force are also opposite, but they're not equal, so we would subtract the one from the other in order to find the net force. Now this formula for net force is not on your formula sheet. It should just be obvious to you that we add up all of the forces, we find the sum of all the forces to calculate the net force. So the forces I have drawn here are very common forces. You'll, you'll use them very often when you're drawing free body diagrams. I just want to highlight especially the normal force. Normal force is one of those forces that might not seem obvious, but it's very important in order for calculating things for showing that the force of gravity is canceled out by something. Same thing goes with friction. Sometimes we forget about it or often we'll be told there's a frictionless surface or a perfectly smooth ice and we can forget about it. But in general, it's still there. There's a little bit of it. And if you're not told otherwise, you want to make sure that you account for it.